Hi, welcome to Toy Hill Studio. My name is Kendall Kessler and I'm going to do another demo creative topography painting. Uh, this time I decided to start with the wet and wet technique before I filmed so that I wouldn't have to wait for it to dry and then I could do some other things, show some other things about watercolors. Even though I'm using acrylics, I'm using it as a watercolor. Though I have a feeling what I'm going to do is do some flat washes and then maybe some dry brush, and then I might probably go into the traditional handling of acrylics. Of course, traditional, it's only been around since the 50s, but um, there is, it is essentially very much like an oil painting. And I'm probably gonna do that since I am an oil painter, but I really like doing some acrylic techniques for these YouTubes. So I'm gonna get some very, very wet paint, so much that it's gonna make a, a ridge on the paper. And my white got stuck in it, that's why I'm taking a minute here. Got to get that out of there. Okay, and I'm going to go across the section. And so you can see that ridge right there. Now I made it, probably got too much paint. So that's another reason I'm probably going to be going into the traditional way of handling acrylics. Because that's not, that's not what I wanted. Didn't want it that dark. So, what you do is you go across with the, the uh, water as it drips down. And you take it off at the bottom and you get a flat area of color. The three main techniques of watercolors are wet and wet or bleeding, whatever you want to call it, dry brush and flat wash. Now when you take a flat wash over color then you get a very different effect than if you mix those two colors. There are many many different variations on the three techniques. Oh, still not using enough water to really get a good ridge. But I am an oil painter. Okay, there we go. That's working better. Okay, now you can see the colors shining through. And I didn't use so much water that I probably won't even have to do much to get rid of that. And yeah, that's, that's better. I'm probably going to be using my hair dryer somewhere through this so that I can get to another technique. I don't like these YouTube's to be super long and make sure I have water this time. I keep not getting enough water. Okay, see how it made a ridge right through there. And you pull that down and the paint will very evenly make a flat area of color that's not doesn't change in terms of the value, lightness or darkness and just lets the paper or whatever's there shine through. I've already got some paint shining through. Okay, now I'm starting to think this turned out pretty interesting. Now the colors that I put in the first technique are starting to look a whole lot better to me. I really like doing these. I keep saying I'm going to move on to something else, but I keep coming up with interesting ideas to do with these uh, topography. And I don't have a whole lot of them. I call them Kendall letters. They're just some made up letters. And I don't have a lot. So I have decided to do a few more. Okay, I remember to get enough water this to work. Someone that works in watercolors all the time wouldn't be saying, I gotta do that, I gotta do that. They would just do it. Okay. But as I said, my main medium is oil paint. I'm real pleased with the one I'm doing now. It's turning out real well and it's just about done of the Peaks of Otter Lodge. Beautiful place. Okay, now that's pretty dark. And I have a feeling that's going to make a big difference in how this comes out. Okay, I just about run out, so I just go right there and finish the wash. Well, it turned out better than I thought. Now I want to get a really thin layer of the blue-green. Make sure you get a lot of water. And see if I can't really get a really good wash with that. That's not so dark right through here. Yeah, that's better. That's still pretty dark. Oh well. Watercolors is the most technical of the painting mediums. It takes a tremendous amount of practice. And I like them very much, but not like oils. As I've said before, it's a great, beautiful medium. But the reason it's not for me, the number one reason it's not for me, is you got to have it under glass. And to me, that's just, I don't care if it's non-glare glass. I don't care what kind of glass it is. To me, it just greatly takes away from the painting. So that's why I love oils. Oils is right out there. You can just go right up to it and touch it. 
and it's extremely durable. Watercolors are very, very fragile and you have to be careful or they will fade. Okay, and I really like that. That turned out nice. I think using a pretty, pretty strong yellow wash is going to make a big difference. I'm gonna put another one up here. Because eventually it's gonna get opaque. But that would be quite a while from now. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm starting to really I think this is turning out kind of nice. All these YouTube ones are such experiments. I, I set them up that way and also, as I've said over and over again, <laughs> it's not my medium. So they really come out different from what I expect every time. I don't know if I will go back into it with a dry brush or use it as an acrylic where it becomes very opaque. Hmm. Never know. I really kind of like this. I like it in sections like that too. Now the um, bleeding areas, they're not as visible as they were, but they're still there. Uh, that's nice. You can still see them underneath this. Okay, that's a lot of washers there. Now I gotta step back and decide what do I want to do now? I really like that. And if I go back into it, it's it's going to be gone. Um, don't know. This may be a very, very short YouTube. I might just leave it as sections like that. And then think about it. And then maybe come back into it. I don't think I'm going to dry it and work on it now. What I had planned was to really go back into this letter and get it to the point where it actually has dimension, that it's not flat. But all these flat washes, I kind of think that's probably not such a good idea. So, I think what I'm just going to do is stop right there and then look at it when it's completely dry and then decide if I want to work on it further. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to click on the link that will be in the description to see the final painting. See if it changed or not. And also the colors will be better. I can never get the colors right with my camera or YouTube. And then there's also other links to my website, to my work on Etsy, and so forth.